Hi, everyone. David Aragoni here with Craig Milkowski. And I know we are both excited that it is finally Breeders' Cup weekend. The action kicks off on Friday with race six at Del Mar. It is the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint, the only grade two event among the, all the 13 other grade ones of this Breeders' Cup. Uh, but Craig, excited to get things started with this five furlong turf sprint. And it really is going to be a matchup of the Europeans and the Americans as we throw up the field for this race, because the field is split pretty much half and half. Six of the runners made their last starts in Europe. Six of the runners made their last starts in North America. Yeah, it's uh, quite the diverse field. Uh, normally, I'm against the Europeans in these races, but this year, I think they're sending a little stronger contingent than usual. So you'll see as we go through the races, I definitely like some of the Euro shippers in here. Now, given how many European shippers are running in this race, Craig, we do not have a pace projector for this run. Uh, you could look at the Timeform US pace, early pace ratings in your PPs, either on timeformus.com or drf.com to find out which of the Americans might sort themselves out towards the front end. But when there are this many horses without pace data, we just don't make a pace projector for these kinds of races, right, Craig? Yeah, it would just be a lot of, of noise that would really be hard to tell. I do recommend people read the comments from Timeform because they'll give you a pretty good indication of how these horses like to run. Doesn't necessarily mean they'll be able to get their preferred position. But if you are trying to project pace, they are a big helper. But there's just no way to program in the, the verbose comments into the pace projector. One trainer who typically has a pretty strong hand in this race is Wesley Ward, and he actually is sending out three runners in this year's Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint, including the morning line favorite, Averly Jane. Let's start the conversation with her and take a look at her last out victory in the Indian summer. This was actually her first ever start on the turf. They had raced her three times on the dirt, and she had shown plenty of speed in those races. And Craig, she really had no trouble transferring that form to turf here in a dominant victory, but she is stepping up to face a much tougher field this time. Yeah, she is. I mean, she's a perfect four for four and generally in sprints. I mean, obviously horses will usually prefer one surface over the other, but it is a lot more likely they'll transfer that ability that I, I found in sprints and she was able to do it just fine. Um, she can certainly win this race, uh, but I don't think she's one that you have to be afraid of and obviously by the 14 horse field uh, 12 will run but even two aes she didn't scare a whole a whole bunch of them away she got a 102 time form us speed figure for that win so i guess it could be argued that maybe she does prefer the turf a little bit though she is a two-year-old so you would expect those speed figures to be ascending regardless of, of its uh she changed surface or not yeah, I was a little curious at the start of her career that Wesley Ward never really pointed her out as one that was going to be pointed to Royal Ascot or try the turf sooner. She was actually even entered as an MTO when she won that off the turf Skidmore up at Saratoga. So they kind of avoided the turf for a long time with her, even though she is a daughter of midshipman, a good turf sire. But like you said, she ran a nice speed figure last time, 102. That's among the fastest that we've seen in this race uh, or among the American contenders. So she's definitely one of the ones in here, but she's got plenty of speed. There are others in this race with speeds so we'll see what kind of trip she works out. Wesley Ward's got another one in this race that might be pretty good, though, and that's the number six, Twilight Gleaming. And let's go two back for her and take a look at her runner-up finish in the Queen Mary at Royal Ascot. This was a 21-horse field. She showed a lot of speed from the start on this straightaway five furlongs and just gets nailed at the wire. Yeah, this was a big effort from her. I, I'm not really sure what to make of the time form ratings for those two races, both this one and her next race when she won in Deauville in a listed stakes race. But we did have the uh, ability to watch her run here in the States three back when she was able to win with a nice 101 time form US speed figure. So she certainly fits from the with the favorite for me. And I'm not going to hold those time form ratings against her in this in this. Uh, Ascot race or the one at Deauville. Yeah, something that's interesting about this horse is that Wesley Ward actually has great numbers with foreign shippers. And we throw up this DRF formulator fact. Uh, horses that are coming back from Europe, not necessarily trainer changes because he doesn't really get those, but the horse that he sends over to Europe as two-year-olds and come back to the U.S. as foreign shippers, he's winning at a 50% rate with an ROI that's well over $3. They're not all running in the Breeders' Cup, but they're definitely winning. So he does have success with horses like Twilight Claiming. With regard to the competition that you mentioned, Craig, I'm not really sure what 
to make of it. The horse that beat her uh, in that Queen Mary Quick Susie came back to disappoint next time in a group one. Uh, the horse that she beat in a close decision last time, Delmona, in that listed stakes in France. She's really not at this level. She's been beaten by some better horses in group competition at her surrounding races. So I'm not really sure what to make of Twilight Gleaming's overseas form based on that alone. I don't really view her as a contender in this race. But like you said, she did run better in her prior U.S. start. So maybe she'll get back to those efforts for Wesley Ward. Talk about another horse that made his last start in North America that's probably going to take some beating in this race, and that's the number nine one-timer. And I say some beating because he's the one that they might have to catch on the front end. This horse has a lot of early speed. Let's take a look at his speakeasy victory last time, his third in a row. He's another one who's undefeated in this race. And Craig, you showed a lot of speed on the front end. He showed that he could handle the five furlongs on turf as well. Yeah, he did. He transferred from the synthetic uh, at Woodbine in Arlington Park to Santa Anita and didn't have any problem at all. He was mostly on the front end, though he did face some pressure this time in that Santa Anita race. Uh, we had the early quarter as fast, a 121 pace figure coated in red. My big concern with him is the speed figures. They are a little bit lacking, so it means he's not really finishing his races off that strong. Uh, he only got a 95 for that win. So personally, I'm going to look elsewhere. Yeah, I had a similar feeling about him. He was very impressive when he broke his maiden by over 12 lengths at Arlington early in his career. But his last couple starts have not been quite as impressive. Like you said, that speed figure on the turf last time, that was a really fast, hard course at Santa Anita. Uh, so I think it might have helped carry his speed a little bit. I think he's stepping up to face a much tougher field here, and he's going to meet some very fast horses on the front end, including those two from Wesley Ward that we just mentioned. Another horse that I think is worth a look is Derry Nain, who's drawn towards the outside. This is another filly taking on the boys in here. Let's take a look at her victory last time out in the Woodbine Care Stakes, also winning, going the same five furlong distance, but up north at Woodbine. Craig, she's visually impressive in this race. It's just she's another one who's stepping up to face a much tougher field here. Yeah, she is. What the, I guess the upside on her is there does figure to be a lot of speed in this race, and she has shown the ability to come from off the pace. Her speed figure did jump up solidly last time to a 95, so... You know, as I always say, these are two-year-olds. She could easily improve 10 points out and be a contender in here. She gets probably the best turf sprint rider in the game in Joel Rosario. So if you're banking on a fast pace, she's one that's going to make some noise. Uh, I do have some concerns about the 11 post and the short five furlong distance. Oftentimes, it really doesn't matter how fast the pace is when, when they're only going five furlongs. These front runners still prove, can prove to be tough to run down if you're coming from too far back. Yeah, I have a lot of similar feelings and concerns about her getting the right trip in this race because I wonder how much the speed is going to come back. But she did look good last time. Another horse that's New York based that I want to get your take on, Craig, is Run Curtis Road, who's drawn all the way on the outside in the 12 post. Let's take a look at his past performances because I thought he took a big step forward on the turf last time in that futurity. And I know he was run down by Slipstream, a horse that we're going to see in the juvenile turf a little bit later in the day. But I thought Run Curtis Road might have arguably run the best race that day, surviving a fast pace. Yeah, he did. He got a 101 time form US for the day, which meant uh, for the race, which certainly makes him a contender in here. My concerns with him are the turn back in distance. He's a horse who has done his best racing on the lead for sure. Uh, and it's going to be quicker this time. It, it, generally, the shorter you go, the, the pace quickens up a bit. So he's going to have to go even faster. And from that dreaded 12 post going just five furlongs, the rails will be at zero. So it, it does give him at least a little bit longer run to the turn. But I still think it's a pretty daunting task with all the speed drawn inside of him. Yeah, I'll admit, I don't know what kind of trip he's going to get here, but I was impressed by his last race. He was dueling for the lead with another horse who faded badly, finished nowhere. That was a race that was dominated by closers, and I loved the way that he dug in through the stretch to hold on for second that day. And that 101 time Formula Speed figure puts him right in line with a horse like Averly Jane, and where she's the favorite, he's listed at 20 to 1 on the morning line, and I think he'll be every bit of that price. So he's one that I do want to include somewhere. Though, Craig, we do have to talk about some of the European contenders, and one that I know that you're interested in is Armour. Let's take a look at his race when he was third in the Group 1 Middle Park uh, in England against a pretty nice field, and he did a good late run in this race. 
Yeah, he did. And he definitely had some real trouble in this race. He didn't have the greatest of breaks. He got held up a bit. Uh, the time form comments seem to indicate the rail was the place to be that day, but he had to come off the rail due to traffic. He got held up, steadied. And the other horses, it, the race was over straight away, obviously. And the other horses were able to just get the jump on him and have a nice unimpeded run. But I like his time form rating of 102. I like that he's handled firm turf well. He's handled the five furlongs well. And I think he's going to work out a nice trip in here while being a decent price. So I, I'm an armor fan in this race. Yeah. And as you can see from this time form us screenshot, uh, one of the great things about the foreign shippers are these detailed time form comments that you get the perspective of the overseas analysts. And uh, I think the real story with armor throughout his career is you can kind of see with the time form ratings is just that steady improvement from race to race. And if he takes another step forward off that middle park, uh, he's definitely a contender in here. And he is one that will appreciate some pace up front. The European horse that I'm most interested in is the number three, Go Bears Go. And let's go actually four starts back to take a look at his railway stakes when he won this Group 2 event at the Cura. And Craig, I was impressed by this victory. Uh, he goes up to take the lead a good way out from home. And I think he finishes up this six furlong race really well. He's not that big of a horse, as you can kind of tell looking at him uh, in respect to, I should say, in relationship to the other horses in this field. But he just looks like a pure sprinter to me. And I think he's really going to appreciate the cutback to five furlongs here because as we look at uh his pps after we look at this uh this replay you'll see that they tried to stretch him out in distance after this uh six furlong railway win even going seven furlongs last time in the dewhurst and i just think he wanted no part of the extra ground because he ran his best races going five and six early in his career and i think he's really going to appreciate the turn back in this breeders cup juvenile turf sprint yeah, that's what jumped out at me. I, I think you can totally put a line through that last race between the seven furlong distance, which is definitely too far just watching the race and, and seeing how he's run well in the past and the fact it was yielding turf where he's run well on the, uh, the firmer turf. Uh, done done just fine on it. He's handled soft courses before, but the combination of a soft course and the longer distance, I think, was just too much to overcome. So I'm not going to hold that one against him. He had run a string of triple digit time form ratings coming into that race. So I certainly think he's got a shot in here and you got to like the 15 to one price. Yeah, these are connections that have had a lot of success uh, with two-year-olds in Europe this year, and they sent an interesting contingent over for these Friday races, and I actually think Go Bears Go is the most interesting of the ones that they're competing with in these juvenile turf races on Friday. Craig, let's throw up our picks for this race. As you see, I'm going with that horse that we just finished talking about, Go Bears Go, listed at 15-1 to 1 on the official morning line. I feel like he's going to take a little more money than that, but I'd be happy with something as low as 10-1. to 1. This is a pretty competitive race, and I feel like the European horses, the money's going to be pretty spread out around them so uh he's one that i definitely want to use along with that 12 the long shot uh run curtis run i think that he's going to be forwardly placed in this race and if he backs up that futurity effort he could be right there at the finish yeah i don't think it's a race you want to take too many short prices and uh for me it, it's just kind of a wide open race so i went with a price as well a little bit of a price in armor not quite as much as you uh i have go bears go in third i have that uh, wesley ward the other wesley ward and twilight gleaming hoping he's gonna rebound and i say rebound he ran just fine in europe but run back to that time form u.s speed figure he ran here in the states and i just think it, it's a fun race and, and a really nice start to the card i usually don't look forward to this race as i look forward to it as a betting race more than a quality kind of race but i think this year is the best field we've seen yet in this race yeah, I think this is one of the more interesting races that's carded on Friday's Breeders' Cup card. And if you want to find analysis of these other races, make sure to check out the other videos that Craig and I will be doing along with Dan Illman and Mike Beer for all of the Friday and Saturday races on Daily Racing Form's YouTube channel. And also you can follow Daily Racing Form on Twitter and Facebook to find these videos as well. So thanks for watching this video and good luck if you're playing these Breeders' Cup races on Friday and Saturday.